Hello and welcome. My name is Laura File and I am a success coach and academic advisor here at UAGC. I will be the host of this session, The Strategy of Free to Promote a Higher Education Culture of Open Access and Digital Literacy via Learning Resources and Technology. By joining us today, you acknowledge that this session is being recorded and will be shared with TLC related materials. Microphones will be muted for this presentation, but we encourage you to post questions and comments in the chat. Also, we have enabled live transcription. If you would like to use it, click the live transcription button at the bottom of your Zoom window. Now, I'm pleased to introduce you <clears throat> excuse me, to Dr. Laura Ann Migliari. She is the dissertation chair and online associate faculty here at UAGC. We will begin our program. Well, thank you so much for that, Laura. I appreciate that. And I also want to acknowledge my research assistant, which is ChatGPT. I use ChatGPT for um, collaboration and also for organizing my teaching and learning topics. So what I would like to do is to um, begin by offering you a question to consider. Here we go. These slides, as we were saying, take a little warming up and moving them forward. So the question is, can something for free become profitable? And if so, how might it be used to change the landscape of higher education and specifically for workforce development? And so I'm gonna now just, if you could imagine walking through a lush, vibrant garden filled with an array of beautiful flowers and plants. The garden is open to everyone. There's no entry fee required, but people from all over can come and enjoy the garden. They can admire its beauty, inhale the fragrances, and just leave with a sense of joy and fulfillment. This garden is a metaphor for the freemium model. Now, let's imagine that in this garden, there's a special section, and it's a walled enclosure that's just filled with the rarest flowers, the uniquest gardening tools, and even expert gardeners ready to share their knowledge. However, to enter this special section, visitors have to pay a fee. And in return, they receive personalized guidance, they receive access to unique resources, and even an opportunity to just take a piece of the garden's magic back home with them in the form of maybe some rare seeds or some special tools. So here we see this, this metaphor and this open section, it refers to the free access side that can attract a diverse crowd and even create a buzz about this garden and the beauty of the garden and why you should go see the garden. And then the walled enclosure, well, that symbolizes what we call the premium side and it can generate revenue and it can also help to sustain the garden's growth and even its sustainment. So just like a garden, higher education institutions, they can create a buzz and attract a diverse student body by offering free access to foundational courses and resources and have a premium section that could represent, say, advanced courses and certifications that could not only generate revenue, but also ensure that there's this pathway for deeper engagement and learning for those who are seeking it. And so just as a garden plays a role in cultivating a community of like plant enthusiasts, the educational institution can contribute to workforce development particularly for building digital skills and applied generative AI so that professionals can be ready to innovate and to lead in this very every changing, ever changing world that we live and work in. So for the agenda of this presentation, I'm going to just share some high level uh, overview of this topic in terms of the freemium, it's this attraction, the benefits and challenges that go with this freemium model, 
uh, why it should be applied and simply it works. And so I'll have some success stories to share with you. And then I also want to offer some future research recommendations uh, for this, these topics. And then I'll have a summary and we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So let's look at some of these benefits and challenges of the freemium model. First, it attracts attention. It can educate potential new consumers, those being students, professionals, and business partners, and it can keep them coming back for more. It can also increase the probability that eventually they will purchase if this is done well. And if it is done well, it can retain goodwill as well as positively impact the university's brand, which that would be wonderful in terms of sustaining long-term revenues, product offerings, and enrollments. The philosophy that's underneath all of this freemium stuff, <laughs> I trace it back to <laughs> biblical wisdom. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 1, where it says, Casting your bread on many waters, and it shall return after many days. And it's this philosophy of giving where these ripple effects can be greater than any one traditional sale. And it kind of speaks to the fact that faith is not finite. But in order for this freemium model to work, there, there has to be the key to this is finding the right balance. And so the first, some of these challenges include value perception, specifically of the quality the quality of what is being offered for free and how that compares to premium offerings and what customers are willing to pay for. So then this kind of falls into the next topic of challenge, which is conversion rates, because you want to have a nice balance of customers that are accessing free offerings to those who are actually paying for uh, the premium offerings that are there. Um, and then this speaks to something that is a limitation that must be contended with, and those are resources, uh, how resources can be allocated to this model, which requires strategy, and the optimization of those resources and how scalable they are to be able to have that flexibility between what's free and what's being offered for premium in terms of revenues. And so other challenges that need to be considered is that this is a popular model. So there's a lot of competition out there. So you have market saturation that needs to be considered as well as the intellectual property in terms of the fact that there's always a risk for unauthorized distribution. And then the challenge of quality, which goes with consistency over the long term in terms of being able to keep up with upgrades and the technological advances. And so why apply the strategy of free? Well, I'm going to share with you some success stories, and you probably already have encountered this just in your daily life, professional life as well. And I'm going to talk about how it can be applied to higher education and what these uh, what strategies are. I offer seven strategies in terms of how that could be applied in higher education, and then just some key takeaways for this. So the reason the freemium model is so popular is that it works. And you may be familiar with this already with, if you consider Google, Google offers many free services, uh, your Gmail, your Google Docs, um, but it sells premium services. Like if you're using their CoLab or accessing Quick Labs for their specialized training. LinkedIn is another example where they offer free professional type courses and then sell premium career services. And then we have Adobe Creative Cloud, which is a software provider, has free basic versions, but if you want the full-blown access to the software, then you have to pay for that. And so what might that look like in the higher education industry uh, specifically? And, and I like to take it to the next level because of workforce development and needs for upskilling uh, in terms of digital skills, and now that we have generative AI. So that's kind of the context that I, my, my mind is thinking of as I talk about this uh, freemium premium model. Uh, so higher education could definitely offer some free introductory, introductory courses, such as digital literacy or the basics of generative AI, but then, and then also some maybe free versions of generative AI software that could come in if there's some good partnerships with some of these new 
tech companies that specialize in generative AI. And then of course there is tiered learning pathways. So this could be a way to you know, sort of guide and have a strategy for what's free and what's premium in terms of the learning pathway. And then also some capstone projects or portfolios giving free access so that this can uh, spur interest into advanced premium courses. And then also could lead to the selling of certification or credentialing with premium offerings. And great opportunity is corporate training and the customization. So with corporate customers, you can offer free basic training for employees of your corporate clients and then also work with them to create customized training modules that are sold and um, at, you know this with the tailoring that's needed specifically for their business needs. And, and again, this is where the opportunity of those business partnerships come into play. Now, some strategies for this, um, I offer seven of them. The first one is partnership with AI firms. And this would be useful in terms of keeping up with the industry standards and latest tools and training materials and so forth. With a bigger vision of building a talent pipeline in terms of these partnerships and focusing this content in a way that's going to really develop the digital skills that are needed for today's workplace, as well as refreshing those curriculums with the latest trends tools. And let's not forget ethical considerations associated with generative AI. Another strategy to think about for inclusion would be a skill assessment tool, something that could be as simple as having it online where there's some um, People, the users can assess their own skills and then recommendations for uh, that would lead them to what's free and then anything advanced in terms of premium offerings. Learning communities is another part of the strategy to really foster this online collaboration and to give support uh, where if maybe potentially the premium side would have uh, access to expert-led communities and other specialized resources and services. And then, of course, job placement services is something that could be um, seen as a valid part of that value proposition that people would be willing to pay for. And then last but not least is research opportunities. Here's an opportunity to maybe offer some standalone free experiential learning, you know, get people involved in a research project, they can experience it, earn some badges, and then be able to, and that could inspire them down to something of premium paid coursework that comes after. So some key takeaways, uh, collaborating with industry partners is number one. And here is your opportunity with utilizing grants and also sponsored research to align with these educational offerings specific to workforce development needs in things like emerging technologies, generative AI, and just building those digital skills that are needed for the workplace. Um, also to consider the balance, very important to have the balance between the freemium and the premium. And then this philosophy, as I shared um, about casting your bread upon the waters, it's really about diversification, taking calculated risks, being willing to be prudent, stepping into those uncharted territories, um, which there's not necessarily that guarantee of return, but you know, with faith and, <laughs> and perseverance to make efforts to learn and to improve along the way, it most certainly will be in terms of probabilities, increasing it for that return to come to you. And then last but not least is continuous feedback loop to create a mechanism so that feedback is captured to um, on all stakeholders in terms of the free and the paying users so that you can get that feedback and really improve upon the product and the offerings. So with that, I want to offer some research opportunities, topics. Um, research is what I do. I, I really enjoy research. So these are some ideas for research. And the three that you see on the screen here are specific to really looking and examining on adoption of the freemium model and what that means in terms of success metrics. And, and here we would look at that conversion rate, you know, the balance between 
free users and paying users. Also looking at resource, the implication or aligning it to resources and the allocation, how to best optimize it and scale it so that there is that balance. And then along with that comes curriculum development in terms of, you know, where does that fit on the free side or the premium side? And, and again, looking at it in terms strategically of your tiered learning pathway. And then the employer partnerships, as I had mentioned, is a strat is a research opportunity. And here the research focus could be on the institutional's value proposition and really making sure that it's so focused that whatever partnership that is engaged with with some other third party is also a really good fit for really enhancing that brand of the university and its value proposition. Um, Accreditation is an important aspect for any educational institution in terms of uh, making sure that there's no compromise to accreditation standards or processes. And so this also represents another research topic to be able to assess those challenges and opportunities related to accreditation needs. And then last but not least, wide open space here for research that's on data privacy and ethical considerations. Um, especially in the handling of student data and the potential of commercial exploitation, which we know is a real reality, but even more so with how we assess the role of generative AI and these risk factors. And how do we go about mitigating those risk factors and compromises to data security? So with that, um, I want to provide you with some of these, uh, a summary before I get into my references here. Uh, this freemium model, it's, based, it's a very popular sales and marketing strategy. It can be used in higher ed. And if it is, um, I recommend it in terms of workforce development for building digital skills and applying generative AI. Always keeping in mind that you need to find that right balance. And in summary, you know, this freemium model, it can facilitate open access for an innovative approach that improves inclusion and the success of contemporary post-secondary students. What you see here on the slide are my references. These are excellent scholarly sources that contain a lot of detail that I found insightful in pulling together this presentation. Um, I recommend, it's recommended reading for anybody that's interested in this topic. And um, also I wanna offer to you my, a way to contact me, my UAGC faculty email, as well as my personal email here on the screen. Um, and if you're interested in these topics or wanting to discuss them after the conference or whatever, please reach out to me, I'm more than happy to. And so with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have at this time. I'm just looking in the chat because there was one comment that we had. Digital literacy is a great example of how it could be used to help many people gain access to basic knowledge and skills they need in a technological society. Lisa Lamb. So yes, indeed. With you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, you know what? And I do have access to the meeting chat now. I can see it. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So thank you for that comment, Lisa. Um, any thoughts that you might want have or want to share in regards to um, just a strategy for how you see uh, higher ed maybe playing that role in that? Okay. Um, I see a that. The response is, I am re researching adult literacy and digital literacy was a huge component of the literature. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, when we think about it, too, we, we're, in, we're in a day and age where this isn't going away. Matter of fact, the workforce is going to be more on uh, humans working with machines. 
And machines, when I say that, it may not be robots yet. They're in the world. They're coming. The robots are coming. <laughs> but we do have a lot of processes that have been automated with um, the algorithms that are just operating. And it's this autonomous type of movement towards an organization that's run autonomously using the machines. So with that, it's a new approach to looking at the workforce and human resources in terms of the human and the uh, artificial intelligence component of it. And so that there's a need for us humans to stay in the loop and upskill. And, and this, this enters into why lifelong learning is so critical and the unique role that the higher education institution will play uh, in this next era of human development with machines. And so it's just a great opportunity and something that I think all uh, strategically minded human or educational institutions should really think about in terms of how to really optimize this opportunity. I think you've had a couple more. Do you see that? I do. I see a question from, uh, let's see, Joanna, how can we encourage the higher ed institutions to try this? Do you have case studies on the ROI of freemium in higher ed? You know what? I haven't, there's some there. I'd have to look back at my resources. There were some things that were there that showed, that gave indication that this would be good, but this is where the future research can really be applied in a way that we can explore this and see how this fits uniquely for the higher education industry. I think it makes for a great research topic to create some new knowledge, but I also believe that it's going to take a leadership that is already in this mindset, the philosophy that I was sharing with you about that innovative mindset and being willing to diversify and to keep up with digital skills because it's going to take a digital leader to lead in this next era that we're transitioning into. And, um, and so I, I really think that that's what's going to be needed. And so there's a old paradigm that, yeah, probably needs to kind of fade away and embrace this new paradigm where it's humans and machines working together. I think you have a couple of more wonderful comments um, from Jonah Jepson. Thank you. Yes, this would be a great research topic, as well as I believe Lisa Lamb wrote earlier, I loved that your research suggests we need to provide access to more people to help them mm -hmm. learn the basics. Great comments, everybody, and great questions. And, you know, the other thing I want to iterate, uh, reiterate is grants. There are a lot of federal grants, monies that are out there available for higher education institutions to be able to access these resources needed to be able to do this, whether it's the research part or it's the um, actual implementation of some aspects of the freemium model and then exploring how that balances out with the premium side. Okay. Is there anybody well, else out there? I'm just looking at our time. We do, yeah. if, if you would uh, entertain a question or two, we do have some time left. We have about seven minutes. If anybody else, uh, would you take another question or two, Dr. Migliori? Yeah, um, this is great because I, I practice my timing. I tend to go over and I tend to lose track of time easily. So I'm kind of surprised that um, I've actually kept it to the, the minimum that I had practiced and then I'm just allowed to have more Q&A time. So this is good. Um, yeah, so I, let me ask those who are in attendance here, like what, what are some things that you would be willing to pay for in higher ed? What do you think should be free versus things that, maybe you would be willing to pay for. I, I think that's a, a starting place, you know, to see what makes sense there. Any ideas anybody want to share? Because I can share with you that, you know, my interests are in data science. 
I invested in my future by actually taking a, I'll give you an example of University of Texas of Austin. They have a partnership with Great Learning and they provide an excellent data science and business analytics program. It's very um, intense. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned some coding, Python coding, and we worked on real projects in, in, in having to present based on what was the data saying and how did this provide insights for leadership to make better decisions. And I, I found it to be a very good learning experience for myself. I went on to another program that they offered. These were postgraduate programs. And one was in advanced, um, it was an artificial intelligence with deep learning and really understanding how uh, neural networks work with convolution networks and reoccurring networks and all this stuff that leads to these large language models that we now see as generative AI. And it was very insightful because it gave me a deeper understanding of how this stuff works under the hood so that when we see stuff like generative AI, we kind of get that. I have a better feeling and understanding of how it works and what and how important it is with some of the programming aspects that get into um, the algorithms in, in terms of what it's pulling from, what it's searching and what it's leaving out. And so that is an example to me of a higher education institution that has um, developed a business partnership. They're selling these courses and you get certified. There's a certification and then it leads to badging. So like I have that in my LinkedIn account, you know, so that's just an anecdotal example. It's my own experience, um, but I know other universities are doing it as well. And, and I think those that are willing to be on the cutting edge of this are the ones that are going to be leading in today and tomorrow, because I just see this is where it's going and, and then unless something happens where we don't have electricity <laughs> where the grid goes down, it's not going away. It's, it's basically going to be here in terms of, and, and it'll just keep uh, advancing exponentially uh, with the way that it, it is just working out right now with advancement and it continues to go rapidly more so than we've ever seen. It's, it's exciting, but at the same time, uh, it needs to be, sober-minded in how we approach this because there are some ethical aspects, security aspects that we must not, uh, that we must recognize and must have these guardrails in place. Very important for that. So I, I hope that helps. Um, I'm just seeing some comments here and uh, yeah, introductory information is free and then maybe pay for the next level content. Absolutely, Millie, thank you for that comment. Um, Lisa Lamb also added about soft skills, great idea. With, uh, oh, Joanne put in about the free career readiness, digital badging, and how that can be embedded into different programs and degrees, focusing on the soft skills that employers want. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think this is a great opportunity, again, for educa higher education to really show themselves relevant in what is needed, not just for our country, but just for the world in terms of developing skills that are going to help uh, with people in their livelihoods and just promoting an all better world to live in with educated people that can make good decisions using these resources, this technology appropriately. Uh, ethics is huge and not everybody's ethical. So we, we have to also have that type of ethical leadership in place. Is there any final questions or a final comment that you'd like to make, Dr. Migliori? Um, well, <laughs> I, I've shared a lot. Uh, I would encourage anybody that's listening to this or even the recorded version, you know, if this is of interest to you, if you'd like to have a conversation, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to speak with you and to collaborate, uh, brainstorm and how this could be applied uh, within the educational institution. Or if you want to tackle on a research project, 
and actually approach it from research and methodology and design, I'm happy to speak to it in that context as well. So feel free to reach out to me. All wonderful, wonderful ideas keep coming. And of course, we can't forget to thank our tech host is Mappy Baez. And of course, we want to thank our speaker today, Dr. Laura Ann Bigliori. You've provided so much information and such great information. Don't forget, um, they do have other programs here at the TLC conference today, as well as the evaluations are available after each program. If you would like to complete that, certainly always appreciate it. So thank you to everybody and all the participants for making this a very, very special program. All right, thank you. Thank you so much.